Today I want to give you a brief history of music broadcasting. Exactly when the first broadcast of music occurred is difficult to determine. During the early 1900s, experimenters developing early radio equipment would play phonograph records in order to test their devices. These broadcasts were generally heard by very limited number of people, usually only by other radio experimenters. One of the earliest broadcasts of both music and voice occurred in 1906 when Reginald Fenston made his now famous Christmas Eve broadcast to ships at sea from Massachusetts. He played O Holy Night on his violin and read passages from the Bible. The late 1920s saw the beginning of what we would now recognize as broadcast music programming with the sponsored musical feature being the most popular programming format. Commercial advertisements were considered intrusive at the time, so these shows usually displayed the sponsor's name in their titles as evidenced by such programs as the A&P Gypsies, The Voice of Firestone, and others. During the 1930s, radio entered its golden age, a period of enormous growth and variety in programming. Live music programs flourished along with comedy and variety shows which also incorporated live musical performances. Radio ruled as the dominant communications and entertainment media for the next 20 years, and then television appeared. If the 1930s were the golden age of radio, then the 1950s were the golden age of television. Corporations rushed to develop television programming. Comedy and variety shows, such as The Ed Sullivan Show, and American Bandstand with Dick Clark appeared, which featured live musical performances by up-and-coming artists. These two shows alone were responsible for launching many a musical career. On the radio side of things, national shows were disappearing and being replaced by local programming. Radio stations had always had local programs, but now that most of the national radio shows were disappearing in favor of television, the local program took on more importance. Radio now starts to assume the format we are familiar with today. Enter the local disc jockey spinning records on the air. In the early 1960s, the way in which music was broadcast over the radio changed. FM stereo was born. AM was the dominant form of broadcasting for almost 80 years. The arrival of FM stereo changed this almost overnight. Not only does Stereo FM have a higher quality of sound, it is superior to AM radio in that it is not susceptible to atmospheric or electrical interference. It was during the late 1960s and early 1970s that music broadcasting moved from AM to FM stations, and AM stations changed their broadcast formats to talk, news, and sports. In the United States, FM finally overtook AM as the dominant broadcast radio band in the early 1980s. On August 1st, 1981, an event that changed music broadcasting forever occurred. MTV went on the air for the first time. The original purpose of the channel was to play music videos guided by on-air hosts known as VJs. Yes, I remember the time when MTV played only music videos. They played them 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Although MTV long ago abandoned this format in favor of the crap they now show, its effect on the music industry was enormous. Presentation, the video, and its effects were now as important as the song itself. There was a period of time during the 1980s and early 1990s that when an artist released a new song, it was expected that a video would also soon be released. And in some respects, this is still true today. Yes, the broadcasting of music has come a long way since the days when Reginald Fenston played his violin for ships out at sea. The broadcasting of music has become a big business, evolving with the changes in technology. Today, internet radio stations stream out music over the internet, and satellite radio stations beam down hundreds of channels of every variety of music you could ever want to listen to. One can only imagine what future advances in radio broadcasting await us.